Thanks to the snakes who sit in high grass or rats in fly trash, I can handle curveballs without batting the eyelash. eyelash yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Dead in Hip Hop album review, Elzai Lead Poison. Should let B open this up. I know, right? He should go last first, cause he gonna he gonna have an hour and a half worth of. Yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I'm gonna let him go. He needs the moment to himself. That's why he needs oh to close God. it out. I'm, I'm, no, I'm dead ass serious. Too. Before we get into the review. Um, I want to thank everybody on behalf of the whole team. I want to thank all the 125,000 plus subscribers that we have for the channel. If you haven't checked out the unboxing video, go back and check it out. It's really dope. You get a lot of our personality. Like so. Ain't no draws. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't no draws. <laughs> Ain't no draws. Listen in some case. For everybody that is a patron, thank you. Um, tell your friends. Everybody that is not one, continue to subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe. So back to the review, uh, Elzai Lead Poison. So, <laughs> uh, Elzai, man, um, it's been a minute since we reviewed it. Well, we did Elmatic, like, yeah, 25 20, years ago. I think, <laughs> I think that was our second album review. I, I, I want to, or third, no. maybe. Yeah, was it? I think it, it was, 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 I think it was a while ago. Yeah, I, I know that. I think I it was know. at the Goblin. I think it was what it, it was wrapped the Goblin. Wow. Yeah. Well, that was our third, then. Yeah, I was saying, it was our second or third. It was yeah. our second or third. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I, I just know it was a long time ago. Yeah. So it's been a while. And I remember I, I said it didn't move me. I, 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 I clearly remember that. Elmatic, you said Elmatic didn't? didn't? Yeah. I, I, I said that he, he was dope. Oh, okay. Good. I said he was dope, but like it just it, it didn't move me. It just hmm. it didn't. But. Lead poison, like 20 years later. So now we got um, the second project. <laughs> when we decided we were gonna review this, um, I put it on and I just I knocked out. Uh, like it, it was late. It was after work. It was after work. I put it on the speaker. I was listening to it and everything, and I fell asleep. I work hard. And when I woke up in the morning, it was playing, and I was like. What the fuck I put Nas on, man? What the fuck is going on here? You know what I'm saying? And I listened to a couple a couple tracks and I'm like, oh shit, that's 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 the Elza project. What the hell? I was so thrown off. Like in all after I listened to this, yo, I was like, yo, this this dude Elza should be like ghostwriter for Nas. Cause this project here, if you just change the voice, everything else was Nas. And I and I don't I don't want nobody to take that as like a diss or anything. Like this is dope. Elzai is dope. He reminds me a lot of Nas, especially on this, which is probably, which is the reason why he made the Ode to Elmatic 30 years ago. The project starts off with Medicine Man, um, and that's a dope uh, track, and then it goes into Introverted, and when I, when I heard that, I'm like, I, I was thrown off, like, damn, he's talking about this is the intro, like, what, like well, why is it the second song? And I'm like, damn, it, like, is he a genius? Like, did he put the intro second and call it introverted because it's inside the first? So I, I, I was just thrown off, so I had to go to Rap Genius. And it was like, the engineer made a mistake and put the, the, the intro second and he just left it that way. And I thought that that was dope. It, I like I, your idea better. Yeah, that's originally that's what I thought, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because cause when you listen to Elza, you know, this man's thinking on multiple, multiple levels. levels yeah. One of my favorite ones was egocentric, mainly because. Damn, it was. I ain't, I, I, I ain't think you probably would like that. Oh yeah, no, okay. e egocentric okay. was was bomb as hell because I don't think I've ever heard a rapper talk from like his ego's perspective. You know what I'm saying? Like you always rap about, and you you know that they have an ego, but you don't rarely hear the ego speak. So I thought that was dope. From egocentric, it goes right into 216. 216s was was super dope, and it's not something that has never been done. He gave you a story which is really cohesive, and he mentioned 16 a lot of times. So the first verse is about this dude that gets shot up playing around, messing with chicks or whatever, whatever. Then the second verse is about how or why that happened and it was so messed up go, go listen to the out it's super dope super dope um friend zone was super interesting too because you know i think if you're a grown man if you and you dated and you're interested in women um you've probably been friend zone a couple times i, I know i have no, no, that's what i'm talking about like that hey, fuck that shit. won't get friends zone. you know what i'm saying god damn no friend zones over here zone, but you won't get any dicks on the <laughs> 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 we could be friends <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, shit. 
I'll, I'll claim I've been friend zoned before. So, you know, it is what it is. So I related to that. You know what I'm saying? This is a very relatable project. Another dope track on this man, Miss Wright. Golly. The whole time he's like, man, this chick named Misunderstood. This is Miseducated. This is Mishap. I was like, yo. I, the ideas that he had weren't necessarily so deep that you know you're you're thinking like oh it's going over your head no it was right in front of your face but it it was just how he was able to execute those ideas on this project now i, I am going to say the one thing that kind of held the project overall for me back and it, and again it's just because of my taste in hip-hop was the beats and the beats weren't bad i think he murked them i think it fit this project but i like Bump in the whip type shit. That's just something I like. But that's not necessarily a detriment. It's just just that emotional, that other emotional connection to this. Like making making the music make me feel some type of way. The music didn't do that for me. Elzai did that for me. And that's why I fuck with it. Elzai definitely connected with me on this project, man. Um, Medicine Man. Look, j just go listen to it. This shit is super dope. I bump it in the whip, but it, it don't bump hard though. It don't go hard. <laughs> like, 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 I listen to it on the headphones. Right. It don't go hard. Yeah, I, I like this album, man. Um, you know, I'm a fan of Elzai. I think what I like about this particular project um, is that, you know, he was very, obviously, if you listen to it, introspective, talking about, like, you know, his depressions, his downtimes, um, and just everything that he was kind of going going through. And, you know, I've said on this show that I like when when, when artists kind of talk about real shit. And, and that's kind of the stuff that appeals to me. And he could have easily went out and, and made a, a hip hop album and it would have been good. But I think to kind of give us some insight into what's been going on for the last few years with you, um, considering what happened with Kickstarter, um, to address kind of like, you know, the, the, the things that you were going on with mentally, um, I thought was, was really dope. I understand what, what you're saying about the beats, Ralph, um, but I, I think, and you're not saying it's a detriment, you know, it's just what you prefer, um, because it was something that I noticed, but it does add to the project. Um, in a way that has like this, this, this kind of this gray kind of overtone somber, it's to it. Somber, very somber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I think that you know that adds an extra layer on top of, of the project because you know you don't become overly consumed with with the production. You really tune in and and locked into the words, and it's more of like a compliment. Uh, part of it like like in movies when they have like certain tints on movies to kind of give it that feel or a TV series be extra dark and shit like that to kind of bring you into like the things that he's talking about the things you know in the subject matter you know again there was so many things that that you know he was talking about in so many different ways um, that he was addressing it and um, one of the particular songs that I like was Hello. I thought that that was dope. Yeah, um, I that, forgot to mention yeah, that. that was yeah, a really that was good really concept. Um, definitely 216, uh, the storytelling there and the way he told the story was was really, really um, ill as well. I liked Alienated, him just moving away and going into his community and people looking at him, you know, a little bit weird. And, and, um, and she sucked. I liked the story that he told there um, over that beat. Um, as well because it was like this this horror flip but the way he told it was so fucking like vivid man it was it was fucking crazy like you can actually see the shit playing out in your head and you know I was I was tying in like so I was listening to She Sucks and I'm like this is kind of a, a weird song and a weird placement for it in context with the album it almost seems a little bit out of place there's a lead in into the song with Alienated where he's pick up the phone and there's some chick and he thinks at the studio, he's like, oh, okay, I'll be through. And I was, and maybe this is just me just overthinking and I'm pretty sure it probably is, but I'm like, okay, you know, you think about, you know, the whole vampires and shit like that. And, and one of the things that they typically go to is they, they feel alienated and alone when they're turned um, because they can't go out in day, they can't be with their family, they can't do all this other stuff. So, you know, myself, like you say, he kind of thinks those stuff on different levels. I was like, damn, maybe, it, that could be why he put that song there and why he let in with it that way. But overall, man, um, yeah, I think it was a good, strong comeback for, for Elzai. And I think it was the right approach, considering everything that has been going on with him uh, over the last two years, to come back and to be real and to be honest, you know, with people that, that are fans of him. And, and like I said, I just love when people just, you know, talk about the shit that they're going through. You know, address stuff that's going on in, in the world. I think that type of music appealed to me. One of 
my favorite, probably my favorite Marvin Gaye album is Hear My Dear, and that was talking directly about the shit that he was going on when he had to write about his divorce. So, I mean, I can almost pretty much echo what, uh, what Ralph said. Uh, I enjoyed this project, uh, but I think where I, I kind of differ a bit is that I just thought it was okay. And a lot of the issue was the beats. When I first put it on, I was just like, damn. First listen, I was super disappointed. Cause I've been excited to hear this and it was it was another one of those Jay Elect situations. I didn't think this album was coming out. So I had pretty much just given up. Cause shit, Preface was how many fucking years ago? 2008. Yeah. What? I love it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 2008. That's a long time ago. So I was just like, man, this album's never coming out. So when I saw that it was finally released, I was like, Fuck yes, I cannot wait to listen to this shit. I loved the preface and I loved El Matic. But this one, it just didn't, it did not wow me. It did not wow me. And the first couple times I listened to it, it didn't even hold my attention to the very end. I was like, damn, I'm so disappointed. It didn't even grab me until Egocentric. That's probably one of my favorite songs on the album because he was actually spitting on that track. Like, I mean, he's spitting on every track, don't get me wrong. But he was, he was rhyming a little bit different on that one and the beat kind of pulled me in a little bit more. The issue with the, with the rest of this is the beats are a bit weak. They're not that they're bad beats, but they, they just tink. Like they're just, they're really laid back and they don't hit. There's no real snare, there's no thump, there's nothing. It's just like the beats are just so laid back that after listening to it, after a while, I begin to get a little bit disinterested in what Elzai is even saying, and that's crazy, because he is such a lyricist. But now, when you get past that, and you block out the fact that maybe the beats aren't that interesting, and you start <coughs> really digging into Elzai and what he's doing and what he's saying, this motherfucker is just so creative with Wikipedia with February. Like, I, I, I like the fact that he's actually getting more emotional on this album. He's he's not afraid to talk about things that he's not talked about before. He's talking about his, his, you know, issues with alcoholism. He's talking about issues with money. He's talking about, you know, the death of Dilla. So it's not that I can't understand or relate to the song. It's just that they don't pull me in and hold my attention. And I, I hate saying this because I love Elzai. But it was only a few songs that I feel like I would go back to. Like I would go back to, <coughs> e to Egocentric easily. I would go back to Hello just because the, Jesus fucking Christ, just because of the idea of being a song. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and when he's talking about putting the hi-hat on and, and we're connecting the chords, I'm like, my, my God. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's like, and he's dodging punches, punch yeah. lines. I'm like, got, this he got, he got hit by a hard hook, by a yes. hard right hook, and he he laid on the beat. I was like, yo. And it's like, it's the funny thing is when you hear a song like that, it's like, how has that not been? Maybe it has been done before, and I don't remember. But it's like, how is that that concept not a popular concept? Like when when Nas did rewind, it was like, how come yeah. that hasn't been done like 30 times before? How <laughs> come this has not been done? Els, I fucking did it, yeah. and probably did it the best that it's going to be done because yeah. I can't see anybody following after that. There are definitely some fucking lines on this shit. You know, the, the ups and downs create their, no, the ups and downs give you the W. I was like, well, that's a dope yeah. line. And the, the one about you, your blunt must be laced while puffing, what do you say? Your blunt must be laced while puffing regs. If you think that I'm gonna get booze on stage, those go to I was like, yeah. damn. Yeah. Like, Elzai is such a spitter, but it just, it almost hurts my feelings that the beats that weren't that good, man. Was yeah, Egocentric yeah. had some bars. But, but yeah, man, I'll say the only song that I did not like, coincidentally, is She Sucks. I did not like that song. Just because it's just, it's cliche, and I think that Elzai can, do something different than making a vampire song. But that was the only song I really just did not like. Miss Right, I agree with you. The idea of doing the misspoke, the misunderstood, the miss this, miss that. Misquoted. Misquoted. Yeah. It's just like, damn, she everybody has had yeah. a woman like that. It's like, I didn't fucking say that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't fucking say that shit. Where did you even get that from? But Elza put it in a track and did it so fucking well. So I just wish, and I, 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 I hate, to, to sound like this, like I'm insulting the people that produced this album because it's not that the beats weren't good, it's just they weren't good for these rhymes. I feel like, damn, these fucking rhymes are so good, I wish they were on different beats. So, so yeah, that's my long-winded way of saying I, I enjoyed this project, but I just, I don't know if I can really return to it because the beats just did not 
they did not grab it. I 1000% agree with exactly with what you're saying in terms of the kind of the same, just kind of yeah. laid back, like, bro, just give me, like, because he talked about a lot of different type of emotions. Yeah. And the, and the musically, that didn't bring out those emotions. Right. Elzai gave it to you. Elzai gave you everything. He was the right. chef. He was the person eating. He was everything. And it's like, right. bro, like, like, you ain't getting no help. Like, yeah. Like, you need well, you put on the same plate every fucking time, man. The same fucking plate. And it's like, damn, I don't want to keep eating off this plate. This plate's dirt. You should've <laughs> gave it some beef, see? <laughs> yeah, when you want to talk about the family reunion, you couldn't just float them on oh CBSB? Oh my god. Man, I, I, I definitely agree with both of y'all as far as on the production, because that was the only thing that kind of helped me back from this album. But man, I fucking love this shit, man. Like, <laughs> when he came out in February, I remember I think I text Ken, or I even text my boy Meech. Oh, when February came out, I'm like, okay, he's coming from a dark place. I think this is going to be like one of those... You know, of course, different from Elmatic and Preference, where I feel like it's, I can play those albums any time mm -hmm. of the day. With this album, I have to be in a certain mood, so I blocked that out. So I'm like, okay, he got this cloud. So when I heard February, I'm like, okay, yeah, he's dealing with some friends issues, relationship issues that he's still dealing with, and it kind of put a limelight on why the album has been delayed since the Kickstarter. Because, and he said it. He said he could have did a better job of communicating with us fans, letting us know what's really yeah. going on. But he was dealing with some heavy stuff. We, we the PDA, he's, he's he's catching weed charges and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I mean, he's dealing with legal issues, he's dealing with in depth issues, in depth issues. He just blows me away when he rhymes. Like on egocentric, the second verse he put, I don't possess enough strength to control me. I make him speak on his rolly. I had to keep a purple on paper like a parolee. Cause of course, he, like he said, he's, he's doing, dealing with depression. He's trying to get back into the rap game. You know, he's trying to get back. And him still in dealing with spending his money, but still at the same time, like I'm catching these weed charges. I'm still having, you know, I'm like having, you know, having weed addictions, but I'm letting him speak to his rolly because he's having money issues too. He's in debt. I'm like, damn, that's like such a clever way to fucking put this shit. It was not like you, you fucking maniac. This shit's fucking crazy. I think I catch booze on stage like throwing kegs. Mm. Your imagination's growing legs. My back growing eyes, annoying spies. Then I cut off annoying lies. I'm like, damn, like you're cutting off annoying lies because you, you're tired of dealing with the bullshit that your ego feeds you. You know, because you're trying to out, you know, you're trying to, you're telling MC. That's why at the beginning of the song, you're like, man, Elza, that nigga can't spit. So they don't he's, he can spit. Yeah, like, so that's why, he's, that's why he's <laughs> going at, he's going at his, his, you know, MC. I'm like, dude, this, this dude is like amazing, man. And then, hello, when I heard that shit, I was like, oh my God, like, how do you speak from within the track? Like, that's crazy. Like, yeah. dude, like, yeah. how, how are you, how are you telling a song? You're putting on the persona of the actual song. I'm like, dude, Elza, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you on, dude? Like, that's why this dude amazes me so much. And then songs like Miss Wright um, puts me right in the same uh, breath of, of talking in my sleep and Demons, how he kind of pretty much, Demons is a song of preference, how he pretty much used the acronym throughout his whole rhyme pattern. So with Miss Wright, He's using every every time he says miss, it's like misquoted. Miss, it's a female. It's a different female. And I'm like, dude, keep dreaming, which is one of my favorite tracks, if you want to know. Thanks to the snakes who sit in high grass or rats in fly trash. I can handle curveballs without batting an eyelash. Lash, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so like, you pretty much saying and this is like a this is this is a personal sports reference for me because I play baseball. Because when you play baseball, you got a curveball. Curveball is hard to read. So pretty much he's pretty much saying whatever life throws at you, without batting, blinking your eyelash, batting your eyelash, he he can throw he can handle whatever life throws at him. Rather it's a curveball. Shit is fucking crazy. <laughs> the fact, the fact, and what's crazy about this, right? So like what's crazy? The, cl the cloud after he finished, keep dreaming. He actually acapella the second verse from the Cloud oh, song because you've ever heard the, the Cloud song where it was always following him, and the fact that he did acapella, and it, and it's like, damn! After all that shit, sometimes that Cloud is still following him, it's still like haunting him. So that's why that's why after you hear the after the Keep Dreaming third verse, um, where he said fucking they play your shit and skip tracks and play mines until the track skip. Fucking Elsa! What the hell? <laughs> so when that shit went out, you can hear him walking like in puddle of water because that cloud is still on. That's why he was like, yo, this is cloud, this is cloud two second verse. And he just like fucking went in. That, that was supposed to be the second verse of Cloud, because if you listen to the to the chorus, what it says, um, all it do is rain, 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 rain on me. So I try to maintain and keep the same brain, wishing I can leave it all behind on a train plane, automobile, but I auto know the water's still gonna spill. So it's like that shit is still. 
fucking haunting him to this day. That shit is crazy. And then he said some shit on um, Keep Dreaming, which is another one of my favorite tracks. He said, um, oh man, I can't believe I, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting. I can't believe I'm forgetting. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't believe I'm you're actually looking at the phone. I really, I do agree, because as I was listening to this, I was just like, ah, oh, like why? And no disrespect to Quale Chris, 14KT, uh, Bombay, you know, like, it. Would, but I still felt like he could have picked better beats for this. Like, overall, I could have, I mean, February was dope. Um, Miss Wright was dope. Egocentric Quelly Chris came with some funky productions on that one. That was dope. Keep Dreaming was dope. But I just felt like it was a lot of beats on here. I was like, fuck. But I was so blown away by what else I was saying on this. And like you said too, the way he was able to kind of tap in emotionally. Because I remember when, when we did the Prime review and I was like, yeah, Elza is just such a freaking robot. It's like, mm -hmm. give me some feeling. This shit here, he gave me some fucking feeling. Like I've never seen him this emotional before. This this was a good album. This was a good album. Like I said, besides the beats, it was our MC as an MC did it enough for me. Did you like it? <laughs> oh, I what is that? Oh. Oh. I must have missed that. Yeah, we must have missed that one. Elza, if you're watching, I think um, <clears throat> what plagues you, at least for this particular project, the same thing I uh, plagues Nas. Better beats. And again, it's not that these beats aren't good, they are, it's just the beats didn't have the same emotion you were bringing. Um, but overall, bro, what the hell am I gonna tell you, man? Like, you're dope. Just continue to give us those concepts and be more emotional overall. You know what I'm saying? But still be spitterific, still do all of that stuff. Just for me personally, like I know you probably don't give a fuck about what I say, but just give me some more shit that bump hard, man. Like I need some shit that knock in the whip, man. But outside of that, bro, like great job, great job. Yeah, uh, you know, if you're watching, I, I think this was uh, this was definitely a good way to come back. Um, you know, you, you've been gone for a minute, the whole situation with the Kickstarter and shit like that. Like to come back and to be open and honest and direct with your fans. Um, I, I think for me, um, I appreciated hearing that. Because, you know, I say it all the time, man, I like, I like when rappers, you know, talk about like real shit. And, and you did that. And, you know, much respect for that, man. Because, you know, I, I'm pretty sure it took a lot to sit there and like write about shit you're going through to like be that personal. Elzai, you are a serious uh, force to be reckoned with when it comes to rhyming, when it comes to writing, when it comes to making a song. Um, it's just, I really wish that these rhymes were on different beats. And again, I'm not trying to insult uh, any of the beat makers that were on your album. It's just, I really feel like this album would have been unbelievable if your rhymes were just on different beats. I don't think that this is a sentiment that is popular. Um, I've said it, uh, B said it, Ralph says it, but just from what I've seen on social media, everyone seems to be eating up and loving this album. So you don't have to listen to us, but we're just saying that, you know, from our standpoint, just a couple of knockers in there. You know what I mean? Would have would have really changed my entire perspective on this album. But shit, as far as rhyming, as far as spitting, as far as writing, do not change a thing because you are one of the best in the game. Um, if you're watching, man, you know, thank thanks for finally releasing this after and I was a huge supporter of your Kickstarter and thank you for delivering a crazy project. And I found the line that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Egocentric. Mm -hmm. it fucking blew me away. He said I I spit that club nonsense, I hop in your mind state, crash your mental plane, wreck your train of thought, and blast your subconscious out the water. Yeah. What? Dude, like this is why <laughs> when people like ask me who's one of my favorite MCs, I always put I can put you up against some of the best of them. Some of the other guys I'm a huge fans of as well. But like you, you was that dude, man. I've been a fan of you for like 15 plus years going strong. You can tell you got some of the, the Nas cloth, the Rakim cloth, the Black Thought cloth, but he, it's still Elza at the end of the day. Really thank you for, for really putting this out and taking the time. And Medicine Man, you, you did it, you, you was writing and you got that motivation, man. You, you did it, you, you started the album off right with Medicine Man. And I think you really, you really showed us how emotional you can be with your pen game. You showed me that. You know, I don't think I've really, besides the leak and maybe memory lane, other than that, you really, this this album really showed me some some emotion from your rhymes, man. Not only you can just out rhyme everybody, but now you can you got some emotion behind it. So I really appreciate you for that and 
man, just glad you back. I'm glad you back. Just come. I heard the joint you did with MED and Blue. I'm glad you back. You are back now and start lighting this shit up, man. Like for real. Like come back and kill this shit.